Cluster headache is a relatively rare, very severe form of headache. We call it a primary headache in that it's not due to something. And it occurs mostly in men. And it is a form of headache which, in which people have attacks anywhere from every other day to eight times a day, but generally short attacks one to three times per day. These attacks are just terrible, and they are incapacitating attacks. Generally, the pain is around the eye, the forehead, the temple, very, very, very severe, and people who get these attacks are very agitated. They do the opposite of what a migraine person does where they go to a dark, quiet room. No, patients with cluster run around, they rock, they're incredible incredibly agitated and then they have a whole series of other features they can feel full in the ear on the same side they can have swelling of the face on the same side they can get a droopy eye on the same side their eye turns red the eye tears the nose runs the nose gets stuffy and these are called cranial autonomic symptoms and they are one of the hallmarks of cluster headache. And these attacks, which last generally about an hour, occur always on the same side and often, and this is very unusual, occur at exactly the same time of day every day. This is called circadian periodicity. And they sometimes will occur in the middle of the night and awaken somebody from sleep every single night with a severe headache, utterly disabling, complete with agitation, lasting an hour, two hours, three hours. These are really suicidal level headaches. Migraine occurs in about 18% of women, 6% of men. Cluster occurs three to one, male to female. It occurs more often in men who are smokers. So middle-aged smoking men is the, is the group that tends to get cluster, although it can occur in women, it's, it's more unusual. And cluster comes in two varieties. It comes in one group called episodic cluster headache, in which people will get these daily attacks for a month, two months, three months, and then they will stop just as mysteriously as they started. A person will have a long period with no attacks, six months, a year, and then they'll have another cycle of one to three months. That's called episodic cluster headache, and each cycle is called a cluster period or a cluster cycle. The attack is different than the cycle. The attack is the uh, number of headaches that occur in a day during a cycle. The second form of cluster is chronic cluster. Chronic cluster patients never get a month off from cluster in a year. They're getting these attacks every day, every other day, multiple times a day, ongoing, year after year. I don't think we know the actual cause, but we know the anatomy. We know where it comes from. It comes from an area in the brain called the hypothalamus. And this area of the brain has a generator that turns on at the beginning of the cluster. And that generator is very close to the area in the hypothalamus where our circadian rhythms come from, our day-night cycling, our monthly cycling, our yearly cycling. All of those cycles come from the hypothalamus. And the generator in cluster turns on in the hypothalamus on the same side as the attack. And then we know the actual anatomy of how the nerves go from the hypothalamus down to the lower brain and out. And when they do go out, they go through a particular area called the sphenopalatine ganglion, or the SPG, which is kind of a target for some of the cluster treatments. But what's going on in cluster is very exciting. There are all sorts of aspects of cluster now that two, three years from now, we may be treating completely differently than we are now.
the way to think about treatment for cluster is that there are kind of groups of treatment. One kind of treatment is called transitional treatment. And that's where we give treatment to cluster patients to buy time so that we can put in preventive treatments. Transitional treatments involve generally steroids, oral steroids, or greater occipital nerve blocks using steroids as well as Novocaine. And those will give patients relief for a week or two while we desperately and quickly try to put in our preventive treatment. Well, the most important aspect and most important advice I have is for every cluster patient to get a headache specialist to help treat because for most cluster patients we can treat, not everybody, and uh, some people don't tolerate verapamil, some people can't take triptans or ergots because they have vascular disease. Shockingly and inexcusably, the federal government refuses to pay for oxygen for patients on Medicare and Medicaid who have cluster headache. And this is a violation of the standard of care. It's a violation of the guidelines of our professional organizations. We go to other countries and they cannot believe that our government does not provide uh, cover oxygen for our most disabled uh, patients. Many people think that cluster headache is the most painful headache, and it's, th it's the standard of care worldwide. The good news about this is, number one, most commercial insurances will pay for oxygen, and number two, we were able to publish an article this year that listed the cost of buying oxygen when the federal government won't pay, when somebody on Medicare or Medicaid needs oxygen who has cluster. And it's in most states, you know, not Alaska, but in most states, the oxygen is actually affordable, especially for patients with episodic cluster. So it's not the end of the world that Medicare won't pay for it because very often cluster patients can afford to buy it because it's, reason, it's not terribly expensive. Um, but the key is to get a provider who can diagnose it and who has a plan for how to treat. And without that, cluster patients are really, really in trouble. The future of cluster is really exciting right now. It turns out that one of the chemicals that appears to be associated with causing migraine also appears to be associated with causing cluster headache. And that chemical is calcitonin gene-related peptide, or CGRP. And a variety of companies have developed antibodies to either CGRP or the CGRP receptor. And these antibodies are being tested in what the government is allowing to be registration or pivotal trials. The rumor on the street is that the outcomes look really good, although none of the data are public, and I'm not part of those studies, so I'm just passing on what I hear. But what I hear is great, and if these all prove to be safe and effective in cluster, the way they work is a patient could simply inject once a month or once a quarter one of these monoclonal antibodies and actually prevent cluster without a lot of side effects and without taking a daily medicine. So on the one hand, the monoclonal antibodies against CGRP look very promising and hopeful as designer medications to prevent cluster. On the other hand, there is a device that is about this big and is inserted through the mouth and a good surgeon can get, get it in in under 15 minutes, and it has no external wires, and it's screwed into the skull, and then a remote controller is used, and this device sits over the sphenopalatine ganglia in the SPG, that key outflow point for cluster headache, and this device, this implantable SPG stimulator, has been already tested in Europe, approved in Europe for chronic cluster headache and works in about two-thirds of patients in which the patient can either terminate a cluster attack or prevent cluster attacks or both. So there's never been a more hopeful time for cluster patients than right now. And the hope is that in three or four years,
our treatment will be vastly improved for cluster.